as I lose everybody over here on the other one. Uh, so I see my first guest up is Johnny Munoz, and he's super awesome, and he's he's really good at beating people up, which is a great skill to have when you need it. Um, and he has joined the stream. He's in the waiting room. I see him on my guest list. It just says not ready yet. Um, so let's see if I'm missing any text that might tell me what I'm doing wrong. Not yet. I'm back. Okay. Well, I'm a big fan of, uh, everybody who's joining my stream right now on, uh, Instagram and on millions. Um, I'll just try to fill the dead space and talk about other stuff. I'm a big fan of until I can get everything going here. Uh, I'm a big fan of vanilla ice. Um, do you guys remember him? He had that one, he had that one hit in 1990 something. It, uh, it was called ice ice baby. And then he got, he got sued for a bunch of money over it because, um, he stole it from Elton John or some, he, some other famous white guy. And, um, but he had a, a much better hit, I believe on it's, it's called Ninja rap. And uh, I don't know if, if you guys are familiar with that one, but it was on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. Uh, and he goes, Ninja, Ninja, rap. Um, and he was doing a sick dance. I'm going to learn that sometime soon and maybe do it for everybody. Uh, we could we could, we could, could maybe, I'll teach it. It'll be one of those breakdown uh, cringy TikTok videos where you dance to music and and uh, and people somehow love it. And it's disgusting. And they didn't have older brothers to beat them up enough. And I'm um, just really grateful I had mine. Um. Hey, Jose, I know. Oh, maybe I'll request help. Uh, I see that Johnny's in the waiting thing on the guest thing, but I, I can't get him uh, up in this joint. It says not ready next to his name. Hey, Johnny, if, if you can hear me. I hope you can hear me. You're the best. Oh, hey. Johnny, I just it just popped up. It said accept, and I accepted, dude. I'll accept every single day for you, man. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. Now that I got the the BA Bantamweight Johnny Munoz up in my podcast. What's up? You've been um, uh, sorry. I'm a little bit nervous. I just drank a, a Bang Energy drink. It's a cycle that I have. I, I get nervous, and I think that that's going to knock me out of it, but it makes me more nervous. You ever okay? Yeah, have you ever drank one of those before you banging up or beating up dudes? Uh, no, never, bro. I don't. I don't like the energy drinks for some reason. It's not my uh, not my cup of tea. It's too sour. I don't know. I don't like the taste. Do you ever take caffeine, or you just you you're amped all the time? Coffee. I like coffee. coffee? Yes, sir. Okay, I can yeah. get that coffee in the morning. Well, again, just for everybody who's joining now, we got Johnny Munoz. He's um an awesome. He's awesome at beating people up. He's been whooping a's and. Beating up bees since 1993s. You're a 90s kid. I heard you say in another in another uh, interview somewhere, right? Yeah, man. I get paid to kick ass, so it's a cool yeah. job, man. I don't uh, and I don't get to go to jail for it. So yeah, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, bro. What? Well, I got a quick uh, a quick round hot seat just to get the juices flowing to start us off. It's a 90s style, quick answers uh, kind of fighting style as well. So you just answer as quickly and truthfully as possible. There's no wrong answers. Ready? Okay. Good. All right. Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat? Street Fighter. Correct. Mario or Luigi? Mario. Mushrooms or Fireball? Fireball. Okay. The Rock or Triple H? Triple H. Got to go with the game. All right, there we go. Bazooka gum or Big League Chew? Ooh. B ah, man. Big League Chew. Okay, all right, there we go. Uh, wear, wearing, your back, wearing your backpack with both slings or just one of them? Two-strap. I'm a two-strap okay. guy. Two-strap. He's, he's all business, baby. He's been beating a lot of people up. He's got to keep them tight. Hose water or tap water? Did you get that one, hose water or tap water? Grown up in the 90s. Yes. All right, then um, uh, let's see. I got a few here, but uh, your mom or your dad? Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, man. 
Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with mom. Mom. I'm a mama's boy, too. I, I like that. Johnny Bravo or Johnny Cage? Johnny Bravo. Okay. Johnny Bravo or Johnny Lawrence, the bad guy from The Karate Kid? Sweep the leg, Johnny? Uh, Johnny Bravo, still. Okay. Johnny Bravo or Johnny Munoz? Ooh. Johnny Munoz will kick Johnny Bravo's ass. Let's put it that way. That's what I'm talking about, baby. All day it's Johnny Munoz, man. So what's what's next for you, champ? What do you got going? How's training going? I think I lost you there for a second. Oh yeah, no worries. I was saying, how's uh, how's training going? What's next for you, champ? It's going good, man. Uh, I my next fight's next Saturday, so. You guys can tune in for that. That's UFC Fight Night. I will be on that card. I was supposed to fight originally four weeks ago, but the fight got uh, uh, called off due to my opponent. Something happened. But thankfully, uh, I will be fighting next Saturday, so I'm super excited for that. And I can't wait because uh, I'm ready to kick someone's ass. I'm pissed off. My fight cam got extended longer than expected. I got to be on a diet longer than expected. Yeah. But I'm ready to fight and make some money. Yes, sir. You've been pissed off for that much longer, so I feel bad for that, man. You're going to get after it. Well, speaking of fighting, man, you've got a lot of cool stuff um, on Millions that you've actually fought in or walked to the ring to and is fight-worn and signed. You've got some uh, King of the Cage gloves uh, that are up there. Do you have those with you? Actually, uh, don't have those with me today, but uh, I'm going to be doing a post on that, so anybody watching uh, – I'm going to provide a, a little reel for that. You guys can check that out. And also, I'll be fighting next Saturday, so I'm going to have more uh, fight kit gear, and I'll be sure to put that over on Million. So you guys stay tuned, stay ready, uh, because that's going to go out soon. Yes, dude, I love it. You got some cool designs up there, too. I like the um, Kid Kavenbo one. I've been meaning to ask you, man, what's Kid Kavenbo mean for people that don't know? Yeah, so Kid Kavenbo, it's uh, – it's kind of like somewhat of a long story, but uh, my uh, my father's actually John, born John Munoz, and but uh, you know, growing up, his parents you know divorced, so he his mom met a, a new man, which was Greg Cavimbo, which she adopted my father, and my dad became John Cavimbo, and the Cavimbo last name is Norwegian, and uh. So yeah, so my name Kavimbo is in my name. I'm Johnny Munoz, but it's it's in there as a middle name, or if it's in Mexico, it's one of the last names. But uh, but yeah, it's a way for me to honor it because at one time, like I was like the youngest Kavimbo, I, like grandkid, even though I'm not related by blood, but through law, uh, that's where it came from. So it was a way to honor them and. Uh, Man, everybody on the Kavimbo side is tall motherfuckers, man. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm an average height person, but like, man, like those guys are all over like six foot, six two. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm, I'm over here Mexican, like in the like <laughs> region motherfuckers. I'm like, fuck, I don't look like these. Yeah. But I love, dude, I love the design on there on millions.co because it's got the American flag on one shoulder, the Mexican flag on the other one. You got two fists up, one for each flag or maybe two for what you know it's like any one of you tries to take this flag from me you're going to get some fists in your mouth and it's not going to feel good so dude i can't wait till you go beat some guys but next saturday is it yes next saturday dude ufc fight night is going down espn ufc fight pass all that good stuff dude my man johnny munoz thank you so much for making the time i know things are tight for you right now and you're preparing for this fight and we're all behind you go get it champ Hey, I appreciate you, man. This was a cool podcast. I like your energy. Let's go. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it more long form sometime. That'll be fun. Sounds good, brother. Thank you. You have a blessed All weekend. Right. God bless, man. Thank you. That was Johnny Munoz. He is, uh, as I said before, very good at, at beating people up and super awesome. Great, great guy and uh, working super hard. His his training camp got prolonged because of his fight. Uh, got delayed, and so he's had to just stay in camp.
for another, you know, four or five weeks. And so he's extra mad and he's going to go uh, slug some dude and get a win and get paid uh, next Saturday. So go check it out. UFC ESPN. Next up, we got a man named Brian Randolph and he is, was a football player with the Rams and with UT. He had an amazing career over at university of, of Tennessee, a safety. And uh, you know, he's ready to come on right now. So I'm going to bring him on actually first. If I can get him on here, you have no requests. I'm not uh, on Instagram. Randy boy, invite. Cool. Let's see if he if he says yes. I hope he accepts me. Um, no, I think that should pop up in a minute here. Oh no. Oh, Randy, is that you? What's up, Randy? Hey, uh, once you accepted this, it says you're not ready on millions, so maybe we'll just go that platform then. All right. Yeah, it, kicked me off. It, it kicked you off? No worries. We're still on good time. Cool. Type it in again. Oh, we got somebody says it says Tennessee topic. Randy, you know they know you, man. It might be that you joined this one live. Is it on the same device that you were going to join? Hmm. Tennessee Topic says that's my dog. We're having some technical difficulties, everybody, which um, for me is no surprise. I don't really even know how to use a toaster. Uh, just like all the cords and stuff, they overwhelm me and I, I give up and I yell for my wife to help me out. Um, so what else is going on? What's, every, what's, what's, uh, what's on everybody's Saturday agenda? I'm just sitting here for a little bit. Maybe I, I boot this one off. We're learning in real time, dude. No perfectionists around here. Oh, there he is. Uh, there we go. Oh, okay. Hey, I got you on both. This is great. Randy. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I call you Randy Boy, but you I know it's Brian right now. Yeah. I, I, first, I had a hard time finding you on Instagram, and then mm-hmm. I somehow saw uh, that you had a show called uh, Randy Boys, mm-hmm. and that I typed that into Instagram, and it worked. So... Hey, we're here live with Brian Randolph, uh, former football player with the Rams and with University of Tennessee and uh, had an amazing career over there at Tennessee. I watched a, uh, a highlight tape of you on YouTube and, dude, you were all over the field. You were picking balls and blasting dudes all day. It was awesome. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it, man. had a good time repping the balls, uh, gave my body up a lot for them. Uh, ended up making over 300 tackles, so. Yeah, so I pride myself getting to the ball, man. I know you love to get to the ball. I was watching a little bit on you. Yeah, ball hawk. I, de- I didn't have quite the speed that you had, but I, I definitely could uh, could throw my head in there sometimes and, and put my hat on the ball. So well, yeah, I bet you, yeah, you had the will though, huh? Yeah, that's it. That's it, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, are you from Tennessee? Is that, how did you get over to to UT? Because you seem like a like the man over there. You're a legend. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm actually from Atlanta and I grew up mm-hmm. born and raised in Atlanta. Um, didn't, I always wanted to play in the SEC, but, uh, didn't really like Georgia. I couldn't stand Georgia. I grew up a Mississippi state fan. So they're the real bulldogs and, mm-hmm. um, Tennessee to show me the most love. The coaches love me. Uh, the fans, the fans, they don't get any better than Tennessee ball fans. Yeah. Uh, they really recruited me hard and it was only two and a half hours away. So I was like, why not become a ball? Dude. Probably one of the best decisions I made, man. Dude, yeah, that's amazing, man. That's awesome. Yeah, UT has has so much love for their for their their football, man. Even when they're on their down years, um, mm-hmm. I'm super into it. Um, so you you've transitioned a bit now into. Uh, tell me about this uh, the Randy Boys show. It's, I saw it was something about betting, MLB, and some other stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I got a show called Keeping It Real, Randy Boy. Right now, it's just dealing with sports bets. Uh, any and everything sports, but mainly betting, trying to make some money off bets. Uh, sorry, you were just talking to Munoz, uh, UFC. UFC always uh, it's a good thing to bet on. I think I did roll with Munoz a couple fights back in the day, but, you know, 
uh, any and everything sports. We go uh, basketball, baseball, UFC fighting, football. But um, just for now, it's just dealing with sports. But I'm trying to expand it to do uh, any and everything besides sports. Talking about dating, culture, politics, religion, just anything that my guests want to talk about in the future. But just getting started. Yeah, dude, that's money. That's money. And it, it made me think of one of the designs that you have on millions.co. It says, I believe in true love. Oh, it, yeah. it, it piqued my curiosity. I, I believe in it, too. But uh, I wanted to hear what your take was on that. And, and yeah, the- yeah, you know, uh, you know, you playing football, uh, football players get a lot of fake love. You know, we don't, mm-hmm. we don't know who's really there for us. Uh, we get all the girls, um, all the support. But then when things go bad, you figure out that um, all love is just it's not the same. Love is not love. There's different layers to love. Um, there's true love. There's fake love. There's, there's real love. And, um, pretty much, uh, I support the true love. Uh, I had a lot of love in my day, a lot of girls, um, that truly supported me and cared about me, my parents, family members, friends. So it's just that type of love. I like to focus on all this fake love, all this movie, dramatic love out there. Yeah. uh, They sell into the public. Yeah, that's, yeah a good, that's a good point. I remember when I when I got drafted, I had like more texts from people I'd never heard of and their cousins uh, than I ever had in my life. And, yeah. uh, and then and then you get released or, or you get injured, and then all of a sudden it's like, uh, where did all where does where's my friends at, dog? You know, hey, man. yeah, it's a dark time once you get released, but <laughs> hey, it shines a light on the true love though, and I support yeah. that true love, man. Yeah, it kind of feels like remember the Stranger Things and and that she goes into that dark room with the puddles sometimes. Yeah, 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 that strange yeah. stuff. Like, that was like my mind uh, for a. Uh, I don't want actually. I don't want to talk about it. It was a long time. Mm-hmm. Hey, I feel yeah. you, man. Let's hey, skip dark, <laughs> dark pot spots make the bright spots better though. That's it, man. That's it. Yeah. Then you you got some uh, some other merchandise logos on on millions as well that people can go check out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got um something coming out actually called the Crusaders. Um, it's this group I started. We we uh read the Bible every week. We have a little meetup. We got a little gang started. Um, Crusaders for the Lord. We all love Jesus Christ. So that's um my next brand that we're showing. Crusading for Christ, man. Dude, I love that, man. That that's yeah. uh yeah. You got you you guys are pretty tight. You and Jesus. Yeah, definitely. No, that's where the source of my strength was. Um, yeah. I used to pride myself uh, through all my football games. I never had to worry. Once I grew up, um, knew the Lord was with me since I was a kid. It just gave me a nice um, source of strength. And all the credit yeah. goes to the Lord, my Savior and Creator, Jesus Christ, man. Man, dude, I'm so proud of you, man. That's that's so awesome. And it's awesome that you're, you're pouring into the people around you with it, too. And Because uh, we all need that. We all got to have yeah, some Jesus. Yeah. That's good, man. Um, what was the other question? Oh, yeah. Do you have any memorabilia up there on, on Millions? Or are you, you planning on maybe putting some up there? Yeah, yeah. I got some old football gloves, um, some old Tennessee gear. But you know how we get we get attached to our memorabilia sometimes. So yeah. now I'm yeah. kind of hesitant to put some of my jerseys out there. But, yeah, I yeah, might I put know. a jersey on there or something down the line. But definitely yeah. going to go with some gloves. I got a helmet and stuff like that probably down the line to put up. Love it, man. That's money. That's awesome, dude. Well, hey, man, it's been uh, such a pleasure to have you on the show, and I'm, I'm glad I got to to meet you and talk with you. Maybe we can do it for a longer duration at some time. And uh, uh, man, nothing but the best to you and the Crusaders and Randy Sports or the Randy Boys Sports Talk. Yeah, and as yeah, that yeah. Rose, yeah. Uh, go check out my man Brian Randolph on Millions.co. He's got an, a bunch of awesome merchandise up there, and uh, go support the man. He's 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 giving back to a lot of people. Yeah, appreciate you, bro. You got it, brother. Have a blessed one. Yeah, you too, man. My man, Tennessee Topic over here on Instagram is is was loving that uh, Brian Randolph interview. I appreciate you you tuning in for that. Let's see who we got up next. So we got a couple minutes here. Um, that was again. That was Brian Randolph. Uh, legend at University of Tennessee football, safety all over the field, uh, went to the Rams, had an ACL injury, but he's out there doing big things now with his sports show and, um, and helping, helping the youth around him with the Crusaders and going over the Bible. Um, up next, we're going to have uh, another legend, 
goes by the name of Cody Brundage. He's a middleweight in the UFC. And um, man, I'm, I'm super pumped to have him on here. He is uh, another guy that's super good at beating people up. And uh, you just never know when that might come in handy because um, sometimes people try to test you and then, uh, and then you're like, Hey, it's like the Jackie Chan movies. You know, you're like, Oh no, 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 no. I don't, I don't want that. And then they said, no, I'm going to kill you. And you're no, no, I don't want any, pro- I don't want any. And then he's going to kill you. And so he throws, and then you got to be able to be ready. But Jackie Chan it up to that point where you're like, Hey, I've got no problems. And you wouldn't think I could beat you up and then jump over this 10 foot wall and leave you hanging. And they, they're like, give me the girl. And he's like, no, this is, uh, I'm, I'm looking out for her and we, you can't have her. And then, um, and then they just, they're, um, they don't, they don't think that he's going to, he, that he's going to do that. You know, they're like, they're so, they're surprised by it. But then on the next fights, they're more prepared and they bring more, the more bad guys. It's kind of like the foot clan and Ninja Turtles, you know, they just keep growing, but they all kind of suck at martial arts and they're getting recruited off the streets. And they're these teenagers that are maybe some are prepubescent. And so they're kind of weak too, but they got a large numbers. And I feel like in the Jackie Chan movies, they try to do that sometimes too. But then you have Chris Tucker up by your side sometimes too, and he'll keep you out of fights because he's so good at talking that they're like, that guy must really know what he's, what, uh, sometimes I get scared when people are really good at talking and I'm like, well, I don't want to fight then because they must know something I don't. Uh, but then I notice some people aren't, they're not afraid of the, the words. They're just like, they're going to let their bodies do the talking on them. So we, we've got, um, Cody Brundage is up next. I'm just waiting for him to come up in the queue. <clears throat> Spinning. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I got somebody in here um, by somebody. I mean, my brother, he's uh, supporting me on here. He says spinning back kicks are the only ones that work. And um, that's, that's one of a bucket lister in my life is like just to be able to learn to do a, a very precise spinning back kick to somebody's chin. And then I just imagine their their bottom chin going into their neck and then their front chin stays the same. But, you know, you broke some stuff in there and tore some tendons. That'd be that'd be I you could imagine it. If, if, it, if you could do it, you'd do it a lot or you'd go look for situations to do it if the situation arised. But you, you don't want it to if you didn't have to. Oh, I see Cody Brundage's name pop up there. Maybe I'll try to get him over here as well. Oh, yeah. Invite. I just invited him on Instagram Live. We got Cody Brundage coming up on uh, Dude Huge Fan. Um, I think he just is, he just accepted my invite, and I'm uh, accepting him on, on the millions as well. What's up, Cody? Take this one down. Cool. You, how's our connection? Uh, testing? It's good. It's good. I just got like the double voice effect right now. Oh yeah, I turn it. I usually turn it down on my Instagram one, and then uh, I give millions the preference, I guess, because that's the one we're doing. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, I got Cody Brundage on here. He's a, a middleweight in the UFC, and he is good at beating people up. And uh, I think that, that I'm a big fan of you for that, dude. You can throw some kicks and punches and knees and wrestle dudes down and uh it's a great skill to have and uh, you're you're very skilled at it thank you i appreciate that <laughs> yeah i watched a uh uh you or youtube highlights of you and i'm like dude that's a that's a bad man right there and uh he knows how to do what he's doing and i thought it was sick too i saw a clip and your wife was like or you said your wife helped get you into the sport you were a really good college wrestler a decorated college wrestler uh, decorated with tons of wins. And then, uh, and then your, your, your wife was like already a fighter and she was like, you should, you should do this. Is that right? Yeah, for sure. Like I didn't, I didn't really even know who she was when I first got to the gym. She was just like teaching private lessons. And, uh, I was like, man, I'm sick. Right. Like I come from college wrestling. I've watched UFC. I'm like, I could do all that. And she let me know pretty quick that I was not sick and that I needed (laughs) a lot of work. Uh, but yeah, she was a beast. She was a really, really talented fighter as well. Now she's a super talented mom, so uh, she's made that transition. But yeah, she was uh, she was definitely, I would say, the reason I, I I'm at where I'm at right now for sure. Yeah, there's always a good woman behind uh, men doing big things most of the time, you know. Yeah. Um, so I was curious. You you graduated from uh, college and got out. So how old were you when you got out of uh, out of college from wrestling? 
I was 23. I redshirted my first year, and then uh, so I had five years in college. Great. And then at what point did you start going after MMA? Uh, Well, I didn't really know that I wanted to fight. I just initially started training because I was a big fan of the sport, and I was like, I'm going to train at the very least. Like, I watched it. There was not a lot of things out there like wrestling uh, other than, like, MMA. Um, I remember telling my mom I was going to start training MMA, and she was like, just try CrossFit or try some of these other (laughs) things. And It just didn't really fill that void for me. So uh, initially, I was just going to train. I wasn't planning on taking any fights. And then uh, my first fight I took on, like, a week's notice, my wife was like, hey, there's this guy in Ohio. She wasn't my wife at the time. She was just my coach. She's like, we're going to go fight him. And I was like, all right, you're the boss, you know, like – whatever you say. And then it, uh, I was super fortunate. It got like the first punch I threw, closed my eyes and threw a Hail Mary, knocked the kid out. And then I was hooked ever since. So that's amazing. How old were you then? Uh, 23. You were still 23. Yeah. So 23. So 23. I'd only been training for like, uh, two months at the time, that's which isn't awesome. really typical, but I was like, worst case, the plan was, I remember going in the fight. Uh, my wife was one of my coaches and then I had another head coach and they were both like, listen, We're going to take this kid down. We're going to wrestle. That's what you know. Like, you'll be able to do that. No problem. And I was like, no, I'm going to try. I'm going to try stand up. Right. And they're like, no, no stand up. Take the guy down, win the fight. And like I said, I just closed my eyes and threw as hard as I could. It just happened to land. And I was like, I'm the greatest striker in the world. Right. Like, uh, but like I said, then I was hooked. And uh, ever since then, it's it's been, it's been a good, good, uh, um, I guess good thing that I decided to compete because now I'm in the UFC and, and making it a career. And, and that's exciting. Yeah, it's a really, really big deal. And you're right. Dude, CrossFit doesn't really do it for a lot of people. Sometimes what fills the void is socking somebody in the face. And that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I like, uh, it's funny. Where I'm at, like, I, have a, I have a bunch of uh, teammates and they like, they'll tell me like these stories, like, man, I grew up fighting. Like I was fighting in the streets. Like that was never really me. I never was really fighting ever. I always <laughs> joke. I'm a GCG. I'm a gated community gangster. Like, yeah. uh, I, I didn't come from like a hard struggle or like where I had to fight it out in the streets all the time. So fighting yeah. was pretty foreign. And like to everyone in my family is pretty foreign. They're like, so you punch people in the face and that's how you make like your, that's your job. I'm like, yeah, that's my job. <laughs> I'm with you with the gated. Uh, get, well, I wasn't in a gated one, but it was like, you know, we play three flies up with a Nerf ball and somebody steals it or something. And, you know, maybe your parents just go buy you another one. It's just right. Not- yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, d- well, that's pretty amazing. So you kind of learned mixed martial arts on the fly while you were fighting and competing, which that has to be pretty rare. To I thought you were going to say two years I started fighting because how long did it take you going from no striking to, to being co- a confident striker. Uh, that's, that's a big skill set to pick up. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I still am working on it to be honest, you know, I'm in the UFC and that's still like a huge hurdle is I'm still trying to grow. I'm trying to grow in one of the biggest promotions in the world. And um, that's tough. I've only been fighting. So I made my amateur debut in December of 2017. So it hasn't even been five years yet. And I'm in the NFL of my sport. So uh <laughs> that's an awesome accomplishment and I feel really good about that. But at the same time, it is tough to take your lumps at the highest level, you know, when you're still trying to learn and gain experience and and things like that. It is, but like, it's it's like drinking water out of a fire hose. Sometimes getting thrown in the, in the fire like that is what pulls the best out of you the quickest. And, And I'm sure that that's what's happening for you. And the good thing is like, you made it to the UFC, like you said, with, uh, this big wrestling skill set and still learning the strike and some of the other stuff, like you made it to the, the top of the top and you still have so much to grow into. So you're only going to get better with the years. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely like can feel the growth. Like I feel like I'm still at a point where I have like really exponential growth in between my fights. Like it's not small micro growth. It's like, I'm really getting a lot better, um, yeah. which is something that's really cool. And I feel like I'm in a good place. Like the gym I'm at, uh, there's tons of really talented guys. So I'm not the best guy in the room and I'm taking my lumps and, Fortunately, I'm able to learn not under the lights. You know, I can learn in my gym, which is great because if I had to go try to figure it out every time on the big stage, that's tough to do. So I I definitely take my lumps and it helps me feel more prepared and feel like, you know, I belong, uh, which is definitely something I struggle with being so young in the sport. Yeah, 100 percent. And every athlete does. That's that's kind of part of the game. But like you said, the good thing is you're in this uh, gym with a bunch of superstars and guys that are great. 
And it's like uh, everybody hated scout team in college when I played football, but I loved it because I knew I was going against the D1 starting offense every day and I was going to get after them. And uh, yeah, for sure. It's a great mentality to take. But man, from what, I, what I've watched, I love the striking game. And uh, uh, oh, you have that uh, piece of merch on, on millions.co where you're kicking some dude in the face. That's pretty oh, awesome. Yeah. Tell me about oh, yeah. that. I, 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 they got some good, uh, we got some good merch, definitely capturing some of my, my highlights on, on, the, on the gear. So, yeah, yeah. kicking. I'm, I, I've just started picking up kicking probably in the last like eight months. So now I like just try to spam kicks as much as I can because that's what I'm doing currently. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I get in that habit of like, all right, me and coach have learned this new thing and I forget everything that I did for the last year. And that's all I'm doing now. So that's something that I think comes with experience too is trying to, uh, trying to, keep up to date. Like, so if we did something a year ago, I'm still incorporating that into my game instead of like, forget about it, learn some new stuff. But yeah, that kick was a good one. You know, honestly, that kick, my leg is still super swollen from, <laughs> when I hit their forearms. That doesn't feel good. Right. Like oh, it looks the cool, worst. But it doesn't feel the best. <laughs> Dude, getting hit in the shin is one of the most angry pains you could get. Oh, the, yeah, uh, the I've been meaning to ask you, does, is it more fulfilling to punch a man in the face or kick him in the face? I would say punch him. Because I feel like it hurts me less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <there laughs> like any time, like even if I kick you, like if someone kicks me or you, you look like you got a pretty big head. I got a big head. If, if I yeah. get kicked in the head, like it's gonna hurt, but it might hurt you back. Like if you punch me, my face is soft, my head's hard. Yes, right. See the the benefit. One of the benefits of having a really big head is that there's a lot more space between your skull and your brain. If you have a well, if you have a smaller brain like I do, like you have a, it's more cushion area to not get the concussions. I've noticed. Same. I think that's why I've never been rocked. Like small brain, big head equals yes. you know good chin. And then, <laughs> and then strong chin, I guess too, is, is is a good thing. But uh, but you got all those, man, and we're super rooting for you over here. I had a question for you too. Did, were you? Uh, ever planning on putting any memorabilia up on millions that's a good yeah so i I, i'm actually planning on putting some of my uh fight worn uh gear uh coming up in the next few weeks maybe it's like some gloves some my fight kit type stuff uh which is pretty cool pretty exclusive type type things um but yeah and then you know like the ufc they always give us like a gear package i'll be putting some of that stuff on there and uh, that'll be like in the next few weeks yes Dude, Cody, well, I just wanted to say, man, thank you. I know you're a busy, man. Thank you for making some time for me today to be on the Dude Huge Fan podcast. And I just wanted to say that uh, uh, one of the reasons I'm a for real, for real big fan of you is uh, your why behind your fighting. You know, you seem like a really genuine, awesome family man. And you're fighting for, for you know, epilepsy awareness, which your uh, daughter has ALG 13 and is a kind of a form of that. And I just wanted to say, man, uh, being able to balance all of that, and everything else you're doing in the UFC, it takes a really strong man to do that. And I respect you so much. Huge Thanks, man. brother. I appreciate that. I really you appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you for making the time, dude. Yeah, thank you so much, brother. All right. You take care. Later. That was Cody Brundage. He's awesome. He's an awesome fighter and an awesome man. Go check him out. Go follow him. Um, Instagram at Cody Brundage, uh, I believe. Uh, but just type his name and you'll figure it out. And then go check out his merch on millions.co. He's got, uh, again, a really cool uh, logo on some of his stuff where he's kicking some guy in the face. And it's like, man, that's a dream of mine. But I don't want to have to compete to do it. But I also don't want to have to get in a fight to do it. But it'd be a, a cool thing to kick some somebody in the face, you know, if you ever um, were into that kind of thing. So next up, we got a man named Javon Johnson. He is a uh, former NFL and CFL player, played for the Steelers, 11 seasons in the CFL, was just a man over there. I'll save the full intro for when I bring him on, which is like right about now, because he just said, oh, let me, yeah. Javon. What's going on, man? What's up, man? I'm going to try to add you on the Instagram live right now as well. All righty. Let me see if I can get you. J A or J O again? J O. J O. Let's see. It's not popping up on my end, but we can we can just rock it over here on the uh, on the millions if you're good with that. Yeah, that's fine. I did. I just added you today, but um, that's fine. Which one is it? Uh, Miles I James Burris. Yeah, I just followed you back. Okay, perfect. Maybe it'll it'll probably show up now. Let me get you. Uh, There we go. Invite. Invite started. 
I hope he accepts it. Um, I got my man Javon Johnson here on the Dude Huge Fan podcast today. Everybody welcome him. Uh, you, if you uh, turn it down on your Instagram live, then then it yeah. won't. I do that every time too. Trust me, I'm we're not technologically savvy over here. That's why we have millions behind us to help us set it up every single time. <laughs> uh, well, man, you uh, were a former Steelers player, former CFL player, 11 years. In the, how's your body doing? 11 years in the CFL? It's doing good. I can't complain. Um, yeah. I was fortunate to not have any major injuries. I think nothing more than a torn, partial torn bicep. So yeah. I, I made out pretty well. Yeah, you sure did, because you didn't just play and hang on for 11 years. You were the defensive MVP of the CFL. And the first time a defensive back has ever done that. Um, yeah. You won a great cup. You, I mean, you really did it, man. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, it was an experience for sure. But, um, you know, I had to learn how to be a pro. Um, that was the biggest struggle at first for me was learning how to be a pro. And, um, you know, seeing other guys go to work every day and, and – understanding that the league was different, you know, coming from the NFL, I had a different mentality. So I had to adjust quick. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. What would you say to the young bucks that are getting into the sport or just getting drafted or just starting? How, how do you be a pro? What are some of the quick tips you can give to the kids out there that are, have got that potential and are, or have that underway? Yeah, man. Learn how to practice first and foremost. Um, you know, pros practice with tempo and, and smart, you know, making sure that they keep everybody up and um, getting to the football, but uh, also learning how to watch film. You know, watching film as a pro is something that you got to learn how to do because it's not as, as easy as it is in college when everybody's working with different concepts and things like that. So what are yes. you doing? Get back. Uh, I see your family, man, too. How, tell me about your family. Yeah, yeah so I got two. I got two. Uh, two little girls, uh, Onyx and Ari, uh, yes. two and four. And, uh, yeah, man, I got two step boys, one's 16, one's 15. And I'm home all the time. And I was actually mulching the yard before I got on the call with you. Yes. I love it. I love it. That's great. And where do you live nowadays? I'm in Erie, Pennsylvania. So back oh. in my hometown. Yeah, that's great, man. Oh, that's great. I love seeing you, brother. Hey there. <laughs> um, I saw that on your, your Instagram page, you were a Lyme disease advocate. That got me curious. Did, have you ever had Lyme disease? No, I never had it. Actually, when I was playing in Ottawa, um, I had a, a person who owned a bakery. Ow! And uh, I went to the bakery just to get some cookies one day. And, and I was sitting there talking to the lady. And she was sharing her story with me. And, you know, it really touched me to hear about, you know, the different complications that she faced as a Lyme disease advocate and person that had it. Um, so I invited her out to practice and she brought a bunch of cupcakes for the guys at practice and stuff like that. But I wanted her to share her story to our players because a lot of times guys in our position, you know, we're so blessed to be on that big stage, but we don't understand, you know, what other people are dealing with and facing on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, she came and shared her story and, and it was something that I supported uh, going forward, you know, I did a bunch of different charity events to raise awareness and money for uh, people with Lyme disease. And, you know, because it's one of those those things, the more research that I did about it, the more I found out about it. And, and you you can live with it and not even know you have it. Like, it's, it's crazy because it's so often we misdiagnosed. Yes, right. It's so it's uh, it's underneath you. Would, it's hard to know and it's hard to diagnose. Like you said, I was going to say, if if you played that many seasons with Lyme disease, I don't know how you did it because people I know that have had it are just zapped of energy. Nothing. Yeah, absolutely. And that was one of the biggest things that she always said was, you know, it, it's it's a struggle every day to be able to come here and put a smile on my face and and make these cupcakes and cookies and all these different bakery items that I do for the people that support my business. So like it, it was an impressive thing. Yeah, no, that really is, man. That really is as impressive as your, your big time career that you had. Now, <laughs> one of the, you've got uh, several designs on millions.co and the merchandise, which are awesome. Uh, one that I really loved and I wanted to just hear how you came up with it was the, it says, uh, Oh, where did I have it on here? It was Outwork Yesterday. What was it again? Um, Out, outwork Yesterday. Be, yes. uh, be, be great, great today. Outwork Yesterday. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, I live. I live by the the yesterday, today, and tomorrow 
uh, theme. You know, I, one thing about me is, you know, I always live in the moment. Like, I've always been the type of player that lived in the moment. Um, so I was always big on worrying about today because when yesterday is gone, you can never get those hours back. So be, be the best version of you today. And you can't look forward to tomorrow because you don't know if tomorrow is ever going to come. So tomorrow's mm-hmm. never promised. So it's just talking about being being great today. Be the best version of you today. And then tomorrow, you know, you could you could outwork yesterday. Yeah. That's a that's a great mindset. Is there any uh anything that practices that helped you with being able to be more present and in the moment? Um just you know, constantly worrying about the now um and understanding that, you know, being the best version of you now is gonna help you out in the long run. So I'm just thankful and grateful that I was able to, to play and, and do the things that I'm able to do. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Well, you've done it and you've done it at a high level and uh huge fan of you for that. That's awesome, dude. What's that shirt say? Is that one of your million shirts right there? Yeah, that's one of that's one of my uh my logo designs. Um two J's back to back stands for Jovan Johnson. I always live in a world of twos. Unfortunately, yes. I got two boys, two girls. Yeah. <laughs> two J's in my name. My birthday's on the second. My football number was two. So okay. it's, it's something about the number two. Yes. Yeah. No, there really is. There, that's that's a great number. Things come in twos. That's big. Well, hey, man, thank you so much for coming on. Is there anything else? Uh, where, where can we follow you on, on socials and, and anything else that you're doing that you want to bring some awareness to? Yeah. So my Instagram page is my most often, uh, often used uh, social media, which is on the island too. So on O N, just like it's spelled Island, just like it's spelled and the number two. And then, uh, you know, you could, I'm going to be starting my new podcast covering the field with Joe Von Johnson. Um, you know, different tips and tricks about playing the game of football from a defensive backs perspective, um, you know, techniques and things like that. Talking to bringing on some guys that play pro former professionals and, um, you know, just doing some things around the community. I <laughs> I still got you on Instagram. You're frozen over here on millions, but. Okay, great. Well, it's great to know. Well, Javon, man, hey, it's been a pleasure having you on, man. Um, much respect to you and, and, and God bless, man. Keep doing your thing. I appreciate it. All right. right. Have a good one. All right. That was Javon Johnson, a legend in the CFL, played 11 years, was the defensive MVP of the NFL, the first time a defensive back has ever done that. Um, And he's got some incredible merch up on millions.co. Please go check it out and, uh, and purchase it. Support him. He's going to be starting a new podcast, um, you know, talking about how to play play the game and from a defensive back's perspective. And uh, if anybody knows how to talk about that, you definitely do. All right. Now I'm going to bring in. Oh, we got a few minutes. We got a few minutes before uh, Liz Carmuch comes on, girl, Rilla, baby. She's going to be our closer today in about four minutes, 12 uh, 48. I'm on central standard time. So any questions for anybody of us out here? Uh, I need to get gated community gangster on a shirt. Yes. Um, why do you get food poisoning so often? Yeah, that's my brother. He knows I get food poisoning so much. I think it's because I uh, potentially have a binge eating disorder where I'll really partition out my calories and eat light throughout the day so that I can get after it at night and, and eat until it's possible puke status. And uh, I think the vast consumption, the the amount of food that I'm eating is possibly where they're, they're slipping in some uh, some salmonella in there or uh what's that other one that has to do with vegetables i don't eat enough vegetables maybe it's just like the um uh the guy cooking the food didn't wash his hands fully after taking a dump and it you know, slips into your food somehow sprinkles in like some salt and uh that's a really scary thought to think about but it's it's my reality at times and uh it's one i'm, I'm willing to continue to risk to eat four double doubles at one time because it's, it's it's really fun <laughs> Um, let's see what else we got going on. Um, I, um, cried today. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. Almost. I'm not kidding. I, uh, that was fun. Uh, but yeah, what else is going on? I, um, nothing too out of the, out of the norm. I've got, uh, I'm traveling to New Mexico in a few days to go shoot a TV show I'm on called the really loud house, which is based on a cartoon show, uh, of the same name, the loud house, but this is the live action version. So I'm like myself as a, as a human, I'm in my human form for the show. I'm not in a cartoon and a voiceover. Like I, I play Rip Hardcore. His name's Rip Hardcore. And I'm like the main kids. How tall are you and how much do you weigh? That's a really good question. Currently, I'm uh, 6'3". Uh, well, round it up. I'm 6'2 and change. I'm 6'3", and I'm 230 pounds right now. And uh, since I was 18 years old, I've probably ranged anywhere from that 230 to 225 to 245 range uh, is where I played more at that 235 to 245 range. Uh where is the show? The show, The Really Loud House, will be on Paramount+. Plus. I think they're still editing the first season, and we'll drop all the episodes once they're done, but we're already shooting the second season. Um, and then I think I don't want to be late on Liz. Oh, she's ready. Liz Carmouche. Oh, you guys are, you guys are in for a treat. Um, let's see if, she, if I can add her on here, too. Well, I can at least add her on, on Millions. Liz! Hey, how's it going? How are you? Good. Yeah, gonna, how are you? My Instagram live around so they can see you as well. Or <laughs> forget about it. Um, <laughs> dude, oh, I'm so uh, ner- pumped to have you on. Uh, this is the Dude Huge Fan Podcast, and I've got Liz Girl Rilla Carmouche on the show, and this is a big deal for me because I'm a huge fan of you. Oh, thank you. Yes, this is the current uh, flyweight champion. You're the champ. Of the of the Bellator, is that did I get the the weight class right? Is it flyweight or yeah, that's correct. Flyweight. So you've uh, and you've defended your title already a, a handful of times. Yeah, I've got it twice now. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, you were also sorry. Okay, I'm gonna do a reset. I make my kid do this a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you collect your thoughts. <laughs> yeah. She's just a person too. She's just a yeah, person. Too. Uh, he's three, and he okay. sometimes tells me to reset, which is <laughs> it's know, awesome. It's hard to oh, tell. Oh yeah, they you. They keep you so honest. <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent. Well, uh, first off, I want to say thank you for your service. You were in the Marine Corps and went on three tours, correct? That's correct. Hoorah! <laughs> the right so branch. Cool. Yep. Okay. Do you ever punch somebody in the face and say hoorah at the same time? <laughs> Not yet. Maybe it's something I should do. I'm sure in the you Marine Corps definitely did. But I haven't done it yet. Yeah. It does. Well, I had a buddy once. Uh, we were in a fight in college, and he said he went boom and said boom before the punch was delivered and That's missed awesome. his punch. And he missed, and, and it stopped the whole fight. And everyone just looked, <laughs> and they were like, did you just say boom? And it was, like, so weird and awkward. It kind of stopped the fight. So that's a good tactic if you ever needed it. Well, okay, you're I'll not fighting, that. though. Well, like in a street fight, I'll consider saying boom before I throw a punch. Yeah, yeah. And then whiff. Yeah, exactly. And then totally miss it. 100%. Um, let me think here. So um, the last fight that you had was against – it was Deanne um, – mm-hmm. Deanna Bennett. Deanna Bennett. And that you won that one by an arm triangle, was it? Uh, yeah. Yes. And that was a big deal for you. Tell us a little bit about that fight and uh, why it was really important for you, that one. Uh, yeah, it was important for a lot of reasons. Uh, one, just really wanting to, to shut her up as far as everything that she was saying was like she'd won the previous fight. It's like, well, you tapped, so you didn't win the previous fight. And that's how MMA goes. That's how any fight can go. You can be winning up until the last second and something happens, you get caught. That's just a part. That's what's so exciting about combat sports. Um, And then this one didn't help. I pulled my calf backstage warming up, like right before I went out. I didn't say, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't even tell my coaches until after the fight. They're like, hey, what's going on? Dude, I pulled my calves. Like, that's why you kept stretching. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, oh man, I just, I just hoped. So I couldn't get my feet to work underneath me. I was afraid to explode off every time. Like, I'm trying to, like, just lift her up. I'm like, I'll tear my calf off if I do this. (laughs) So, you know, uh, for me, it was like, coming back from a hard time and being able to push past an injury. And I've had injuries before backstage. Like I broke my ankle backstage. I've had different things. Um, but the calves, like to have your calves get pulled 
and to be strained, that's what you're exploding off. That's everything you're you're relying off for shot, shot defense, striking, everything. And yes. so my head was like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do." <laughs> so to be able to uh, to overcome that, to be able to silence to silence doubters, um, definitely put a little bit more pep in my step and more confidence. What I'm able to do. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I've noticed about you as I've been just binging interviews and fights and content is just how strong and resilient your mindset is and how you go in there, not just to shut somebody down physically, but like psychologically you're in it and you kind of put things on the line against yourself. So like you like that, you, you, you pulled your cab. You didn't even tell them until later on when they asked or uh, I don't know if it was Deanna or somebody else, but they they weighed in heavy and you still said, no, I'll choose to still put my belt on the line. Stuff like that. Do you do that so that it makes you go up a higher level or just because you're like, no, I just, it, what, um, where's the thing from? Yeah. So uh, it's a few different things. I certainly do within different points of the competition, different points within the fight camp, kind of find a motivator and find something that's going to help make me strive that much harder because anybody can find stagnation. You know, whether it's at the top and you're a champion or you find it at some other point, it's really easy to find stagnation, to fall into your routine and get really accustomed to that. And you'll get used to the same training partners where they're doing the same thing and you kind of memorize it and you have a dance that goes with them. Uh, and then when you go in a fight, you're facing somebody that has not been performing this dance with you. that isn't doing everything that you're accustomed to. And a lot of times that shakes people up and you'll have an excellent fighter but because they've been stagnant. They go into the fight and they perform horribly. And I don't think it has anything to do other than making yourself constantly uncomfortable. So one of the things I'm always trying to do is make myself uncomfortable. Not necessarily like pulling my cap before a fight uncomfortable. That's not the ideal. But I, I always try and push the limits to put myself out of my comfort zone. So I never feel like, um, like I'm just coasting through everything. I always want to challenge myself and I try and find new ways and do more research on how to be healthy and recover right and uh new strength and conditioning methods so for me it's always about evolution i try and translate that into my fighting style as well as much as possible yeah i just the discipline is on like a next level like i've heard you say you've missed big events and weddings and this and that and the other um because you train every single day it, yeah. is that is that something that you had before the Marines, or is that something that was instilled to you in the Marines? Have you already, already had that kind of work ethic? Um, I think I've, I've always had a strong work ethic, particularly when it comes to athletics. Like when it came to my education, it was always, uh, I can cram everything in the last 20 minutes before something's due, you know, or right mm -hmm. before a test, I'll just cram all this information. So when it came yeah. to athletics, um, that wasn't the case. I, I understood that no amount of, you can't cram 20 minutes before you have to go perform. You're going to perform horribly. And with athletics, that always clicked for me. And I always understood that. And I've yeah. always been in athletics where I'm in a team sport and I can give 110%. And I've worked my butt off preseason through the season and we still lose the game because I'm, yeah. I'm performing with other people that don't really have that same desire. Um, and that always killed me. And I was so tired of it that I knew that once I got out of high school, once I got out of college, I was no longer involved in team sports. If I found a sport, I was going to find something where I did not have to have teammates and all my work ethic could pay off. And the Marine Corps yeah. just helped me develop that and find the discipline to understand that it's not even just four to five days a week. It does take seven days a week um, and that there's a correct way to do it. And when you're hungry for something, you can work with nothing and still manage to come out on top. And the Marine Corps definitely helped just cement and stand in shape with the discipline, then the work that I feel is already there, but it definitely helps you to make it that much stronger. Yeah, it was like you were the per perfect kind of mindset for the Marines, and it took you to that next level that carried you on into your UFC career, which is and 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 Bellator career. It was, it's that's and it's amazing how quickly you picked up the sport too. I know that a lot of uh, branches they have like boxing within it. Is that where you did you learn hands there, or was it all afterwards? No, it was really all afterwards. I mean, I wouldn't really say that the stuff I learned to get taekwondo, kido, it was very limited, and we would do it for maybe a month at a time. I just didn't have the attention. I'm like, yeah, no, I want to be an astronaut. I don't want to be a swimmer. So I can never stick with any, any type of striking or any type of combat sports. My mom was anti boxing and anti wrestling. So, you know, boxing, you're going to get brain damage and everything else. I don't want you cutting any weight, wrestling, and tearing and stuff. Like, Sorry, mom. Yeah. I'm kind of um, but I really didn't get involved in I mean, there's a little bit of American training, but I wouldn't say it's serious. There's certainly a lot of uh, false bravados that they give you um, to think that you really stand chances in scenarios. And it wasn't just like that out. I really started pursuing it. I 
was able to focus on each of the martial arts and really get a handle on it. Yeah, no, it's amazing. It really is. Um, so I could ask you questions all day. I want to hop into a little bit of your memorabilia because you have uh, a can was it a Kampai shirt that is fight worn and signed, or that, that you were your walkout shirt was that from your last fight? Yes, these are my last fights. So I have uh, two walkout shirts. One was sweat and then on the nasty backstage, and then the one that I wore out to fight in the cage. I uh, also the sweater that was wearing the whole time. And that, Amazing, amazing. And those have your real sweat in them? I'm sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Well, if you guys want her real sweat in something, um, uh, sorry. <laughs> Go to millions.co. Yeah, let's see. Oh, you got the merch. You're the first person that has the merch on hand, and it's the only time I didn't ask. Okay, so this was Fight Warren in her last fight where she defended her title. Let's see. Let's go, baby. Those are going to go quick. You guys better go hop over there. They're selling on millions.co and the breakers. Love it. Ah, thank you so much. See, you're on top of it. You're, every little detail, that's that that marine in you. I love it. <laughs> um. Well, uh, okay. The connection's off a little bit. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Are you there, Liz? Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to ask you one last. Well, also, well, let me cover real quick. Her her nickname is Gorilla, which is a play on the term Gorilla, and she has some amazing merchandise on Millions.co with a bunch of different colored designs and just design designs. So you guys should definitely go check that out. Um, and is that your favorite animal? That's actually not my last question, but might as well ask it. Uh, no, I think my favorite animal. That's hard. I love baby animals. So we have baby animals right now. Baby animals. Baby, baby, baby form sucker. <laughs> uh, but I would say my favorite animal would probably be like a dolphin. Yeah, because I, I heard that they're the only animal that has sex for fun or outside of people, uh, humans do it, but, um, it's paused. So I don't know how that landed, but, um, <laughs> um, at one time, well, this is just a quick, uh, based uh, quick story. I had a coach one time that uh, I won't say his name, but before a game, he had us do this like weird visualization and he said, okay, now picture an animal and, and, or your favorite animal or something. And so I did that and I was like, all right, ready. He said, okay, now tomorrow, I want you on the field. I want you to become that animal. And I thought, uh, one, that's super weird, but also, damn it, because I picked my my childhood dog, who was a 15 pound poodle named Pierre, uh, just a house dog, and that wasn't going to serve me very well. I wish I picked a gorilla like you. That would have been a lot smarter. But um, so I didn't use that that routine. It, it ended up working out okay, but yeah. <laughs> Oh, no. Huh? Oh, wait. Maybe it's this in the way. Let me see. Can you hear me? It's cut. It's super choppy. It's super choppy, and I really wanted this answer from you because you're the best. Let me see. Um, Maybe I'll add you on the Instagram one real quick, Liz. Oh, no, I don't have it on there. That's all right. I'll, re I'll refresh mine, too, just in case it's me. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, I think... I think that might be it. Okay, sorry. One last question. I won't take any more of your time. I know you are I probably have every minute of the day dialed in. So, um, what's kind of the next evolution for Liz Gorilla Carmouche? You've you've made it to the top. You've got the championship. You've got the belt. You are the champ. You've defended it several times. Um, I, I had heard somewhere that you are now wanting to focus more on giving back to, to veterans. Yeah, that's a big thing. Is my wife and I have a nonprofit and. Uh Uh, 
for breeding as well as training service dogs for injured vets. We're able to provide scouring the whole nation trying to find the best. Um, I know veterans have had the past, and I also have. And just being get a dog or great, but some dogs want to work. Just like people, you have people that are meant to be asked. And then, other like my dog, she still. I'm so sorry. It is uh, camera disabled. Bummer. She was talking about the coolest stuff right now. Big fan of Liz Carmouche. Okay, well, it got cut off. Hopefully, Liz, if you're ever watching this or it gets made a clip of somehow, I just want you to know I'm a big fan of you, not just for your fighting, but how uh, kind of the next evolution of what you're trying to do is give back to the veterans. And you, you were talking about um, training up service dogs. It was cutting out. I couldn't quite make all of it out. Um, oh, maybe it says she's refreshing and will join, but, uh, super big. Well, let's just, maybe I'll save the nice words for when she's here. If she comes Liz, um, hmm. just a guy and his computer that he knows not how to use. This is uh, for this Instagrammers. This is my setup over here. Actually, millions sent me these things right here. And um, I'd have been lost without them on picking it up or figuring it out. Um, let me get it. I got a text here. Um, is she still joining? So to all the fans watching out there, what's your favorite animal? Super curious to know. Oh, I see a purple screen. Hello. Hello, Liz. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Holla if you hear me. It's working now. Uh, I can, I can, I can hear you, but the screen's purple. Can you, can you hear? Uh, can you see and hear me? Liz. We're having some technical troubles. It happens sometimes uh, because. Okay. Girl Rilla power is different. That is very true. Alec Kramer that it, she's got power on another level. I'd hate to get punched by her. Hello. Hello. Oh, can you hear me, Liz? Sounds good, period. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up now. We're having some technical difficulties. Um, but Liz Girl Rilla Carmouche was just an awesome guest to have, and it was cutting out at the at the best part. And I uh, hope you, you all could hear it. So I'm going to try to get a little clip in here for her. But she's, she's the champ. She's the champ of Bellator of the flyweight division. She's defended it uh, a couple of times. And I can only imagine getting to that kind of a mountaintop 
and what it does to your head. And it's kind of like, well, well, what's next? And so she was sharing that the next evolution of, of what's driving her and what um, she's going after and her purpose behind it is to help military veterans uh, that are in need. And so uh, she's helping to raise up service dogs um, for those who need them. Um, she's helping bring awareness to mental health struggles and um, uh, just a huge fan of her for that. That's a huge deal. And she's making a real difference with her platform and uh, using her gift to be able to shed light on the things that are near and dear to her heart. And so we uh, we wish you the best, Liz Gorilla Carmouche. And uh, please, everybody, go check out her gear and her merch. She's got memorabilia from her last time defending the title. She's got a bunch of legit stuff up on there that probably won't stay up on there for too much longer. So go buy it on millions.co, as well as a bunch of really, really cool designs and merchandise, um, sweatshirts, shirts, everything you can imagine. Girl, really, go get it. Thank you all for joining, dude. Huge fan podcast. Um, love you all.